Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earth Master back here on this weekend, Saturday, July 8th, uh, 2023. It's about 11 12 a.m. here along the West Coast. Latest quake activity. Um, let's see, where are we? Hiding over here around the uh, West Coast area with uh, looks like that's a 1.4. There we go. Not for sure why it wasn't highlighted, but it is now. Uh, looking at the last 24 hours of earthquake activity here on the map. Getting a pretty good cluster of movement here across the Indonesia area. Uh, in the last 24, it looks like. Um, a little bit of deeper and some shallower earthquake movement taking place here. Mostly fours, upper fours. The latest quake of 4.9 here around Papua New Guinea. About 41 kilometers deep. Uh, further back over here across the Kermadec Trench, watching a little bit of migration here to the south. We did see a 4.6 into the Kermadec Islands area earlier this morning. That's pretty deep, almost 400 kilometers deep. So watch this area. Uh, I know we've been saying it a lot to watch the New Zealand region, but it seems like things are starting to migrate a little bit faster and further down south here uh, into that area. Uh, across the Big Island, not a whole lot going on aside from movement across the Pahala area. Uh, some very small microquake movement. Uh, South America, nothing showing up according to the USGS map. Just a slight, I'm sure there's activity, but not a whole lot. Um, apparently, I, I still can't access the EMSC data. I messaged the developer, I'm waiting on a response back from him. Uh, because I'm not able to access the feeds here, the um, the data systems where you can get, uh, you know, obviously the earthquake activity information from EMSC is not working. I've updated my feeds. Uh, that still doesn't work. So waiting on a response from him. I might have to re-upload the or uh, re-download the earthquake 3D program. All right, 4.4 over here across the uh, Mexico area. This is into the Middle America Trench, it looks like. About 50 kilometers deep. Up into the states, around the Appalachian Mountains here. Uh, one from yesterday and one from today. The latest shows a 2.6 over here north of Greensboro area. A little bit of movement across Oklahoma and Texas today as well. Uh, I think the big picture here out in the uh, states have been the uh, little bit of activity across the um, California region. We're watching a swarm of activity kick up here across the southern portion of the state yesterday. It looks like today uh, slightly quieter, although not completely. The latest at 1.5 here north of Los Angeles. The 2.5 map and above uh, shows some of that activity from yesterday. I don't think we had anything today so far above 2.5, uh, but we'll continue to watch that. A little bit of movement north of the bay was kicking off here as well. Uh, not specifically talking about the Clear Lake Volcanic Field, but uh, movement a little bit further south off the um, off the southern tip here of the Mukama Fault Zone near the uh, Calistoga area. Uh, let's see, Northern California, a little bit further north. Still, uh, looks like we had one, a little 1.7 overnight. Uh, the rest of these here from yesterday into the Pacific Northwest, uh, where the trimmer activity has been elevated. Let me show you guys the trimmer uh, map here real quick. That was uh, last night or yesterday's map, 198 epicenters of trimmer up here at the southern end of the Vancouver Island Range. Now, that uh, area is showing a little bit of earthquake activity even upstream here. Uh, 2.3 coming in late last night. So uh, watch this area potentially for some further movement. When we do see elevated tremor, it does tend to apply further stress upstream. And we're seeing that slightly take place up here across the Pacific Northwest. Um, over here around Iceland, nothing showing up here on the USGS map, but goodness, they are having quite the earthquake swarm. Uh, let me bring that up here. This is, let me refresh this. Just within the last hour, it looks like they had another uh, four-pointer up here, 4.2. I believe this volcano um, is getting ready to erupt uh, the past week or so shows a, uh, a large number of quakes. In fact, I was reading somewhere on this uh, 
Iceland site, the uh, meteorological site here, shows that there's been, well, over 7,000 earthquakes in the area of the Rec Chains Peninsula uh, since the uh, since about the fourth. which is pretty crazy. Um, it looks like, you know, according to these folks here, uh, in spite of seismic activity, deformation seen in GPS and in SAR re re records strongly suggests that magma is migrating towards the surface, uh, which is, um, you know, a good possibility that this thing will erupt again. It's right here on the southwestern edge of the Iceland area. Uh, let's see here. I, unfortunately, I can't get the Iceland um, volcano site to pop up. I'm not for sure what's going on, if they're working on their webpage or whatnot, but it just sits there and kind of hangs up. Which is unfortunate because they have a lot of good information on their site. Uh, but uh, either way, we'll continue to watch that. Uh, this area does see quite a bit of uh, volcanic activity and earthquake activity here. Uh, but the USGS not showing not showing anything there. Even that 4.5 that kicked or 4.2 that kicked off a little bit ago uh, not showing up. Uh, they do have a 4.5 here from yesterday in the Greenland Sea. But uh, uh, the Atlantic Ocean pretty quiet uh, for now. Hoping to get that EMSC data back, data back on the globe here. It's really beneficial to see what's going on uh, I hate being dependent on just one agency it's not good and there's other options but uh, I prefer the EMSC on the uh, on the globe as well uh, let's see Alaska region up here looks like about the same from yesterday not really seeing anything major let's see here we had one over here around the Kro Kamchaka trench 143 kilometers deep um, let's see, aside from that, this movement here across the Aleutian Trench from yesterday. Uh, one earthquake in the Japan area from yesterday as well. So a little bit of earthquake here and there, but um, I guess we'll just see how today comes about. Um, let's see, I wanted to bring up the live data. Let's see if we've got any unusual activity stirring up out here. Not really seeing anything. I'm missing a couple stations here. They're offline. Uh, looks like both of the Japan stations are offline. I'll see if I can't key them back up. Um, if they don't come back up by themselves. Uh, let's see. Anything else on the EMSC map? Last hour of data. There's that 4.2. There's a little bit of movement out here in the Atlantic as well. 2.5 near the Azores it looks like. South America is showing some movement with a 3.0 into the Perichilli Trench. Uh, also some activity over here across the uh, Indonesia region south of the Philippines, 4.0 in the last hour. I uh, haven't really seen any super large quakes here, but uh, you know, it could be definitely brewing up. This is the last 24 hours of data. Uh, again, this shows a lot of the magnitudes though that the USGS does not show including the smaller microquakes. It looks better on the Earthquake 3D globe than it does scattered on that map. But I'm um, hoping, hoping this guy gets a hold of me soon. I know it's a weekend, uh, but I mean, let me show you guys. I've updated, I've updated the feeds. Um, so when you go, I'm, I'm not even going to use USGS. I'm just going to use the EMSC. Now that should pull up the EMSC um, data. Hold on a second here. We're going to go 2.5. See, that's EMSC World Last 50 2.5. I mean, it's, I'm not combining them, but it's selected and I'm not seeing anything pop up here. This is stuck, so that means there's no earthquakes whatsoever shown up. Um, refresh it, and nothing pops up at all. So I am unable to get the um, 
the data from here. So I'm stuck using the USGS for now. And um, I don't need that many ones on the globe. I'll try to keep it at about 2.0 or above for that uh, matter. So it's, not, so it's not so cluttered for one. But uh, goodness, yeah. Hopefully we can get this fixed here soon uh, to monitor the, uh, the data, not only across the uh, Mediterranean region and whatnot, but also Iceland area with that uh, extreme volcanic uh, or earthquake swarm up there that they're having. All right, well, let me see. Did I miss anything else here on that? Uh, let's go ahead and check out the GeoNet servers real quick. See what's going on. And I'll check back on the Iceland volcano site a little bit later. There's that 3.3 down here into the uh, South Island area from yesterday. Uh, there is, I believe that's going to be the Kermadec Trench activity that we've seen. Potentially. Uh, let's see here. Actually, it kind of looks like it's uh, something closer. Let's see what we got going on here. Let me go back to the uh, earthquake map. hour ago a couple hours ago there's that 3.8 got deleted two hours ago so 4.8 two hours ago i'm believing that's going to be that sig uh, signature that we see on the graph although it looks like it's centered more around the uh, north island area So two hours ago or so, that's going to be that uh, four-pointer showing up here. Not for sure why it's not being picked up uh, across this region drastically, but it's not. It's just very, uh, very minimal. Huh, interesting. All right, well, but aside from that, it uh, looks like a little bit of activity stirring up here across the South Island region. Um, not really seen anything big, but a little elevated activity today, it looks like. Three point three. Alrighty, uh let's move on here and go to the solar ham site, see what's going on for the uh, space weather. Watching this gigantic, massive sunspot, thirty three sixty three over here. Um waiting for a little bit more complexity to form in the sunspot region uh, before it becomes a major threat we did lose a little bit of structure <clears throat> and sunspot uh, complexity over here across this region which is now on the southwestern quadrant of the sun doesn't look quite as complex as it did even yesterday uh, so this may be dying down but we'll continue to watch this sunspot region it's pretty massive but the cores themselves have dissipated. Uh, region up here does show a little bit of strengthening, it looks like, here within these colors. Different uh, colors indicating the different magnetic structures here in the sunspot. So this one is facing us currently. Uh, with it growing like that, we'll continue to watch for some flaring from that individual sunspot. But also at the same time, we'll watch this one down here in hopes that it may uh, strengthen a little bit, get a little bit more dynamic. Uh, right now, 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 35, X flare around 5% chance, and the UV filter rays out here uh, doesn't show any current flaring. Current uh, flaring currently taking place, uh, but again, these can change in the blink of an eye. We'll continue to watch those two sunspots for some uh, some flaring. Yeah, that's a big sunspot. I need to get me a um, solar telescope. Look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. Easy sunspot to uh, catch on a solar telescope. But it needs to be a little bit more complex there to uh, 
create that special spark, so to speak, when it comes to flaring. Uh, no major coronal holes have been produced. Or, uh, well, let's see. What do we got? This one, number 23. It looks like it's filling in, unfortunately, uh, which means that's going to deplete any um, solar wind, high-speed solar wind streams that will be uh, facing Earth here in the coming days. I don't think that's going to have any effect on us now with it filling in like that. So the aurora forecast continues to stay green with only minimal conditions there uh, at the higher latitudes. Uh, Storm Prediction Center today, not a whole lot of uh, severe weather going on. Looks like still a 2% chance across eastern Colorado. Main threat potentially could be that little hatched area for some large hail and a little bit of wind out there, but nothing major going on. Uh, of course, with always, uh, as always with any thunderstorm, uh, there could be a, you know, a uh, isolated threat there of that tornado uh, potential there in the 2% range. Thunderstorm activity, there it is across a, a good portion of Wyoming. Uh, it covers actually all of Wyoming. Looks like Yellowstone as well. We'll watch that uh, Yellowstone graph light up later this afternoon once the storms start brewing to kind of show a, uh, a outside interference pattern on all of these uh, storms or on all of these graphs. It looks similar to this, what you see up here, but maybe potentially today could be a little bit more dramatic looking there on the map, but we'll check that out uh, a little bit later on this evening. I'm going to take advantage of the somewhat cooler weather we're having. Uh, it says 75 out in the Chico area right now. I got 78 in my backyard not supposed to be too hot here today uh, in the coming days it will be unfortunately um, but I think we're gonna top out here around uh, well 95 I tell you what that's a lot cooler than 110 and that's what it was when I was out in Texas well it was 110 here at home but when I was out in Texas there uh, um, not just this last week but the previous week uh, missed all that heat, luckily. But it's uh, it's gonna it's gonna cook. I have a feeling a little bit cooler on Sunday. Uh, close to 100 there on Monday again before the heat really starts to ramp up uh, above the 100 degree mark. I think one of these days here showing us. Um, well, in there, I don't know if I want to even look at that right now. But, uh, yeah, goodness, everywhere is cooking currently. It is summertime, I get it, but I'm just not one to say, man, I love this heat, because I don't. I'm not a big fan of the heat at all. And it's coming, it looks like. Need to be over here in the Greenland area. I can take, uh, what do we got? What's our temperature range up? 18 degrees? Ooh, that's a little chilly. But uh, I could probably handle that over 110 Got to make sure you got plenty of firewood. Nice little cabin up there somewhere. Yeah, that sounds like my kind of uh, my kind of vacation. I like the cold. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Enough rambling on this beautiful Saturday. Take advantage of it if you got some nice outdoor weather. Uh, I'm just going to try to get outside and get some yard work done here before it really starts to cook. We'll catch you guys back here later tonight. Have a good one, everyone. Peace out.